Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, Hypertrophy Training Modalities, video number three, giant sets. This is skyscraper. That's how I think of giant sets. Maybe you should as well. So what are giant sets and where in the program are they a good idea to implement? As we define them at RP, giant sets are whatever number of sets it takes to get you to a certain total rep goal. So you show up to the gym and say, I want to do 50 reps of lat pull downs, and each set I'm going to do to whatever rep in reserve for that week is. So for example, let's say it's your second week of training. So maybe it's like two reps in reserve for every mini set. Then you say you do 13 in the first one and then seven and then blah, blah, blah. And in all the sets total, remember, you don't care how many sets it takes, add up to 50 reps. And once you hit 50 reps, then you move on to the next exercise or something like that. So that's a giant set. It's also called a marathon set, probably more accurate. I think originally this is called a marathon set. What a lot of people call a giant set is actually when you do like a bunch of exercises in a row, like lat pull downs, no rest, rows, no rest, whatever. That to me doesn't sound like the wisest way to train because you're so tired towards the end. You're basically having just a crap load of junk volume. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my foot down and say, we're going to call this giant sets. If you want to call a marathon sets, word up. So what are the upsides of these things? They have some really cool upsides. Here's the thing. Anytime you look at your log book from last week, let's say for lat pull downs, so last week you did 13 reps with 100 pounds. This week it's 105. Yes, the goal is to have excellent technique and mind-muscle connection the entire time. But we know that in the real world, especially on some exercises, especially ones you might have trouble feeling the mind-muscle connection, you get so caught up in hitting that number 13, 13 reps, that you may let the technique slack. And if not the technique, then at least the mind-muscle connection. Sometimes that's not ideal. Yes, performance is important. But if you're sacrificing your technique and your mind-muscle connection for just getting more reps, that usually doesn't pay off in the long term. What giant sets can let you do is because there's no pressure to do any certain number of reps in any of the mini sets, like your first set isn't 13. Your first set is like just your first set, whatever number you get, you write down. And then whatever number you get after, you write down and add to that and add to that and add to that. So what if it takes you five sets or seven sets? Doesn't matter to get all the way to 50 reps. What you can do here is because it, you don't have to perform at a certain level in each set, you can use each set as an almost pure expression of technique and mind-muscle connection. Every rep is perfect in your mind. Okay, I'm really going to flex my lats here. I'm really going to flex my lats and I'm too tired, and my technique is breaking down, I rack. Okay, how many reps did I get? That was 12. Sweet, I write down 12. There's no pressure to get 13. There's no pressure in order to make your technique something that it shouldn't be. So if you're having a real hard time on an exercise, mind-muscle connection-wise or technique-wise, but you still want to use it to do mega work, you don't just want to do it light to try to figure out how it works, giant sets are a really, really, really awesome way to do that. They really take the pressure off of performance. The performance guaranteed, so you're going to do all the reps are going to be, sets are going to be hard, and you do enough of them to get up to 50 total reps, that's out of your hands now. So no big deal there. You can use it to really focus on the quality. Second thing, you can use giant sets as a way to do a little bit of the opposite thing, which is to make yourself do enough work. For example, let's say lateral raises give you a really crazy burn and it's really hard to go close to failure. You don't really know, am I ever close to failure? Or am I really bitching out? You can say to yourself, I'm gonna do four sets of laterals and then you do the four sets, but you really slack off. And it turns out those four sets are really only the hypertrophy equivalent of like two and a half sets because you slacked off so much. Here's the thing. If you tell yourself, look, I need 50 reps, you just got to get 50 reps done. You can't say like, oh yeah, set one, that was eight reps. If it was, you still have a shitload more reps to go. If you get set one as 12 reps, real close to failure, then you just have fewer sets left to do. So if you want to really hold yourself up to do a lot of work and not let yourself sort of like cut the sets a little short to be like, oh, I did four sets, but we know the sets were shit. If you give yourself a rep total, there's kind of no way to escape doing the work. 
more brutalist, like let's say leg presses, you just hate them. And you're going to give up way before failure. You know this. If you just say, look, I'm going to do a total of 60 reps in the leg press uh, with this much weight. I'll give you how many sets it's going to take. You're going to get fucked one way or another. And you don't even have to try that hard within each set. If you try hard within each set, you get to do fewer sets. If you don't try as hard within each sets, you have to do more sets. It auto fixes the thing to give you just that kick in the ass that you need. Lastly, if you have moves that don't allow load progress, giant sets can be a way of progression. For example, lateral raises. You use the 10s for week one, you get 12 reps. What you're going to do in week two, use the 15s, you get like four. That's dumb as shit. A way to progress in these is to do the 10s, week one, a total of 40 reps. Week two, still the 10s. 45 total reps, then 50, then 55, then 60, then deload, then you come back and maybe you do the 15s, right? So it can allow a form of progression that, uh, you know, if the load isn't something you can alter, then maybe you can alter the total number of reps. Super awesome. There are some downsides with these. So where are they good to do? Anything that fits that, what I just said. Anywhere in the program where you need to focus on technique more, or you need to force yourself to put in the work, or you, you know, you don't have loaded ability to go from 10s to 5s or 10s to 15s is too much. That's a great place to use these in your program. Here are some downsides and maybe considerations of when not to use giant sets your program. First, they need a long time to do. Okay. Maybe a girlfriend's with you at the gym and she's like, hey, how much longer do you have? We have to meet up with Brett and Allison. Sounds like fine American names. In like half an hour, and you're like, I had a giant set of hack squats. She's like, all right, uh, how much longer is that going to be? Like, I don't know, like two hours or something. I could die in the middle of it. She's like hoping you're going to die because then she can still make the date and say she waited. So take a long time to do. This is for the dedicated that really are pissed off at a certain muscle or exercise not working for them or not growing, and they just want to take some time to really work on it. Another thing, how do you detect your maximum recoverable volume if you're not even keeping track of set performance and you say, well, hold on, we're doing 50 and then 55 and then 60 over the course of the weeks. Yeah, but you can always rest more and do more reps. You may be way beyond what is recoverable, but still actually doing the stuff and still doing more reps and further sinking yourself way beyond the, your body's ability to recover. So if you use giant sets in one exercise or one session of the week, another exercise that day or another session at least of the week for that muscle group should be straight sets regularly monitored for its performance so that you can say, okay, I'm doing giant sets on pull downs on Thursday, but on my Mondays, I do regular pull-ups, regular, try to match and, uh, you know, match the reps and then beat the reps and match the load and beat the load. That way, when you hit your performance limit and you start to get a little weaker, you can say, hey, okay, the pull-ups say that my lats are fried. And yes, I can come in and do more pull-downs, but I'm not gonna because that's way beyond my ability to recover. Again, the big problem with giant sets is because you're not focused on each individual mini sets performance, you actually have no idea when you're getting weaker. On straight sets, you do, so always keep some straight sets in, like canaries in the coal mine, uh, just to make sure that you don't get over your Murphy. In other words, if you take your entire program and turn it all into giant sets, you're going to like get bigger and stronger for a while, and then you're going to start getting worse, and you'll have no idea. You're like, ah, shit's not working, and I feel really tired. And you look at your actual reps that you've done, you're like, yeah, it seems I've been getting weaker for weeks, but, well, oh, I wasn't trying that hard, and then who knows? You have to have some straights in there, some straight sets in there some more conventional training that actually is mirrored exactly to your performance abilities so that you know when it's too much and when it's time to back off. Folks, that's it. We'll see you next time for another training modality. In the meantime, I want to leave you with a thought experiment. Imagine what it's like to be a canary in a coal mine. Some strange man with a large hand and gloves let you into this coal mine and you're thinking, yeah, it seems like I'm flying towards freedom, but gee whiz, it smells real weird in here and I don't feel so good. Terrible things we do to canaries. See you guys next time.